TikTok sues Montana for banning the app. The Chinese government is destroying mosques. And a Chinese pilot does a dangerous stunt next to a U.S. Air Force plane. And more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Whenever you go online, you should be using a VPN like Surfshark to cover your tracks and protect your identity. So last week, I reported that the China Uncensored Truth Social account had been taken offline due to egregious violations of their terms of service. Well, I have some good news. The account is back up. Not long after I published that video, Truth Social sent me an email saying the account was inadvertently banned due to a bug in its bot mitigation system. It also claimed they had sent me an email earlier that day, which I never received. But hey, not complaining. At least now I can get the truth again. A Chinese military jet harassed a U.S. Air Force plane above international waters in the South China Sea. The U.S. Indo-Pacific Command reported this week that a pilot of the PLA Navy did an unnecessarily aggressive maneuver in front of a U.S. Air Force plane. It claimed the Chinese pilot flew so close to the nose of the U.S. plane that the plane was rocked by the force of its wake. The U.S. military said it happened last Friday while the U.S. pilot was flying in international airspace over the South China Sea. China blamed it on the U.S., saying its reconnaissance missions close to China were the root cause of maritime security issues in the area. Because of course it's the United States' fault whenever anyone does stupid things like this, I'm sure that was also the reason this Chinese Navy plane came within 20 feet of this U.S. Air Force plane last December. And speaking of Chinese planes, China's homegrown passenger jet took its first commercial flight this week. The Comac C919 took about 130 passengers from Shanghai to Beijing. So far so good, but I don't think I'm going to be getting on one of those anytime soon. If they're anything like Chinese roller coasters, you're really taking your life into your own hands when you get on board. Comac is a state-run company and stands for Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China. It's trying to compete with the United States Boeing 737 and France's Airbus A320, which have a duopoly on the market. While China claims it's domestically made, large parts of the plane are supplied by foreign companies. U.S. engine maker GE Aviation and France's high-tech industrial group Safran were two of its biggest suppliers. And given how much Chinese hacking there is of U.S. and other countries' trade secrets, I'm sure the C919 is about as natively Chinese as fortune cookies are from China. You may see them in every Chinese restaurant, but that doesn't mean they're actually Chinese. And after the break, TikTok is suing the state of Montana. Welcome back. There are only five religions that are allowed in China. And if you've been following the genocide of the Muslim Uyghurs in China, you may be surprised to learn that Islam is one of them. Yes, technically Islam is legal in China, but if you practice it, you better watch out because the Chinese Communist Party is on a mission to Sinocize religion. In other words, it wants to make everything in China more Chinese, and it doesn't consider Islam particularly Chinese. This last Saturday, members of a mosque in southwest China clashed with police as they reportedly tried to remove its dome and minarets. Protester told CNN that scaffolding had already been set up around the mosque when they arrived and that authorities had driven cranes into the compound and were ready to do the demolition. After an hours-long standoff, CNN reported that the police finally left. But this is the Chinese Communist Party. No one ever comes out of a fight with the police without a target on their back. A source told CNN that police were arresting people after the fact and issuing threats to others to turn themselves in or face harsher punishments. The mosque is located in Najiaying village of Yunnan province, which is mostly Hui, an ethnic minority in China. The Najiaying mosque and the Grand Mosque in the neighboring village of Shadian are considered to be the last two government-approved Arabic-style mosques in China. Well, apparently not anymore. Because of the Communist Party's obsession with Sinicization, anything that doesn't look Chinese enough, and by Chinese they mean from the Han ethnic majority, is being destroyed. As the government state council put it in a white paper on the region of Xinjiang, which is made up of mostly Uyghur Muslims, 
Only by regarding Chinese culture as an emotional support and spiritual home can we promote the prosperity and development of ethnic cultures in Xinjiang. And for those who don't do as they're told, the party will make life hell. Speaking of making hell, TikTok isn't going to go quietly into the night. After Montana signed a bill preventing app stores from allowing downloads of the app in the state, TikTok sued. The complaint alleges the Montana law violates the company's constitutionally protected rights to disseminate and promote third-party speech. It also claims that the ban is preempted by federal law as foreign affairs and national security are exclusively matters controlled by the federal government. Montana is the first U.S. state to do a statewide ban of TikTok, which is owned by a Chinese company, ByteDance. The ban isn't just about TikTok, though. Any app owned by a foreign adversary also can't be downloaded under the new law. Montana's governor said the ban was to protect Montana's personal, private, and sensitive data and information from intelligence gathering by the Chinese Communist Party. The law will go into effect in January of 2024 if it's not stopped by a court. And after the break, is the U.S. still working with the Wuhan Institute of Virology? Welcome back. If there's one thing the pandemic has taught us, it's that common sense isn't that common. Case in point, the U.S. has now renewed its contract with the research firm linked to the Wuhan lab that is the center of the COVID-19 lab leak theory. The U.S. National Institutes of Health has awarded a $2.3 million grant over four years to EcoHealth Alliance. Before the pandemic, EcoHealth used NIH funding to work on bat coronaviruses with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which was believed to be ground zero for the pandemic. Many, including the head of the FBI, believe that COVID-19 was likely the result of a lab leak, and many suspect it came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, because the institute was studying bat coronaviruses near where the first cases were reported. When the spotlight first turned to the Wuhan lab, the president of EcoHealth Alliance, Peter Daszak, worked hard to cover up the connection. He got a group of researchers to publish a letter in the journal The Lancet debunking the lab leak theory as a conspiracy. Now, of course, he claims the lab leak theory is possible, but like I said, he worked really hard for a long time to make people think otherwise. Now his company is receiving NIH funding once again. And as if that wasn't bad enough, Guess what the new grant is for? Studying bat coronaviruses. I think I'm gonna start investing in face masks, PPEs, and sourdough starter because I'm sensing another pandemic coming on. Now the contract says EcoHealth can't use the money for gain of function research, collecting samples from the wild, or working in China. But that doesn't mean China's totally out of the equation. Dazic defended the grant's renewal, telling DailyMail.com the funding would be used purely for lab work and to analyze samples that were already collected in sequences at the Wuhan Institute of Virology and other institutes worldwide. Yeah, I don't know what to say. If I had a way to bottle and sell stupidity, maybe this would seem like a good idea. But two people accused of acting as illegal agents of the Chinese government were arrested in California this week. John Chen, a 70-year-old U.S. citizen originally from China, and Lin Feng, a 43-year-old Chinese citizen, are accused of targeting the spiritual practice Falun Gong. Falun Gong was a popular practice in China in the 1990s. Its spirituality and health benefits led over 70 million people to start practicing it. The Atheist Communist Party started a campaign to eradicate Falun Gong in 1999 because it doesn't like anything spiritual it can't control. Like Islam, for example. Chen and Feng were charged with making a false whistleblower complaint about a nonprofit run by Falun Gong practitioners. According to prosecutors for the Southern District of New York, the two tried to bribe an IRS agent to advance their complaint. Their goal was to get the tax exempt status of the nonprofit removed, and they allegedly offered bribes of up to $50,000 for an audit of the group. Fortunately for them, instead of bribing an IRS agent, they bribed an undercover law enforcement officer. The two also allegedly worked with a Chinese government official to further the Chinese government's campaign to oppress and harass Falun Gong practitioners. They're charged with not registering as an agent of a foreign government, bribery, and money laundering charges in the state of New York. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. When you go online, everything you do is being tracked and logged by the websites you visit and your internet service provider. In many cases, by your government. That's why no matter where you live or what you do online, you should always be keeping your internet activity private with the VPN. 
And now, Surfshark has servers you can connect to in over 100 countries. That's more than any other VPN. So that makes your connections faster and more reliable. Plus, Surfshark has top-of-the-line encryption and a no-logs policy, meaning they don't collect your browsing data. In fact, Surfshark was rated editor's choice for the best VPN for privacy and security by PC Mag. So check out Surfshark. With just one Surfshark account, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out now. Surfshark has a special deal that includes 83% off a two-year plan, plus three extra months for free. You can protect yourself for just $2.21 a month. So go to surfshark.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored to secure this deal. The link is in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.